just taken a little paddleboard to this um, secluded beach and I'm the only one here. It's just beautiful. It's quiet and still, except for the sounds of a couple birds. Um, struggling with a couple of boat issues and what's going on is our water maker is giving us some trouble specifically the boost pump the boost pump gets the water from where it is around us and like up to where this water maker is so the boost pump is like the first step in making water it's like the first thing the water comes into this is the our lazarette in our cockpit and the water maker is sitting on a shelf so the water on the outside of the boat would be coming through to what part? I think like right around here somewhere. Right, like, so to get the water from that point up to this device, we have this little pump. What we're about to do now um, should allow us to make water, not as efficiently and not as quickly, but at least enable us to make water um, until we can get this part fixed. So we had an old um, salt water wash down pump. We have it installed under our galley sink. Uh, we used to use this for dishes, Here's but it's sink. basically just a standard pump. So what we've done is we this valve here is where the water comes from underneath the boat. So we now have it going into the pump, out of the pump hose, into the strainer, and then this hose is leading back to the water maker. So we're trying to use this to pump salt water up from the bottom of the boat, up above the water line to the high pressure pump. I am turning on. So we haven't used this pump in quite some time. No, we haven't. Basically yeah. since we installed the water maker, right? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> well, see? I mean, at least I fused it. And what pump I blew up a fuse. So this is the new connection I'm making from the salt water pump that we use for our dishes to the water maker plumbing. You can see that there's some dripping coming out, so I'm just going to try to get some uh, seal and thaw it to help seal it up. Below the water line? Above the water line. So the water that's coming in from the ocean comes in through a valve called a seacock and you can open and close them. And I think what you just said is that it's closed, closed because if it were open, we'd be sinking. Water would be rushing in. Yeah. So I can actually Oops. Where is our seacock? Can we can I show people? Yeah, it's this valve right here. Like lever. This valve right here. So we have seven on our boat? Uh yep. Seven holes in our boat that go to the outside. So we have the head. Yep. The head, our toilet. Yep. We have the I the yep. engine. Yep. That needs water. Yep. That's two. Um So we have you have one for each sink. Right, so the galley sink, head sink. Oh, I was wondering if we had You one. have a toilet outflow for waste. You have a toilet inflow for water. That's four. You have... Um, engine. You have the engine for the cooling water. You have our water maker. Six. Yep, and then we have we actually have two in the back for uh, draining up the cockpit. But we never close those because the cockpit always has to be drained. It has to be able to drain. We've got two, huh? Yeah. So like we have eight. Yeah. Oh, I guess we had seven before we installed the water maker. So you can see, this is the pump water coming through. So we have the pump running in the galley like you saw. Uh, you can see this is vibrating with the water moving through. Water is going into our strainers, and then it's plumbing from the strainers into the water maker. And you can see it's coming out the exhaust port here. So what's next is we're going to try to start up this high pressure pump. Now that we have seawater moving through the water maker, we're gonna try the water maker. We're gonna try the water maker now. So we fired up the water maker. Um, I'm just testing it now from the test station. So in other words, he's just made water. And now it's and it goes out this little faucet before it goes into our tanks. So just for testing. We like yep. know that it's good. 350 parts per million. 
500 is food safe per the FDA, so we're well below that. We're keeping pressure right now. So this is holding steady right now at 800, that's the operating range, and it's making 35 gallons per hour. So now that this thing is like working, we're just gonna watch it because it has the tendency to get hot and turn off or that's what we think might happen. So the water maker did end up getting hot and we had to turn it off. Um, the the, the goose pump, sorry. Um, and we just kind of let, let her cool down for a while because I was on the phone with my sister. Um, so it was probably, yeah, at least half an hour and now we're starting her back up. So basically what the conclusion to this whole thing is, is that this pump that we're using is not designed for continuous pumping. So it's just going to keep getting hot and we just have to keep watching it and turning it off. Until we get a spare part. Until we get our spare part, yeah, so. Does something look different than usual to you here? Something a bit off? How about now? This is our bill, but it's not our boat. It's Andromeda, Chris and Michelle's 34-foot Catalina. We'll be taking her to another part of the island for an inland adventure today. The plan is to explore for a couple of hours and then return back to our lovely anchorage. And since we're all going, we've decided to go together in just one boat. Excited to be on Andromeda today! Yeah, we might need to go that way to get around that show. Yeah. 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 Like your bacon chewy or crispy? Known popularly as the narrowest place on earth, this man-made bridge we're exploring today replaces a natural rock one that washed away in a hurricane over a hundred years ago. The bridge separates the Atlantic Ocean from the inner bank and harbor, and the contrast between the two bodies of water is striking. Looking glass, looking glass, we cannot keep the name of this place. The power of the ocean is one of nature's greatest forces. Seeing that contrasted against the placid water on the other side is deeply significant, perhaps to us sailors in particular, who witness these contrasts on a regular basis, but are still amazed and humbled by the ocean's ability to transform states so dramatically with seemingly no effort. Mission accomplished. It's time to head on now, but not before taking a dip in this glorious water.
Join us next time when back in our beautiful Anchorage, we set out to explore everything the incredible spot has to offer and get an idea of what a typical day for us is like when cruising the Bahamas.